These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. We already know what the symbol is for a direct current power source. The symbol for a direct current power source is two uneven lines. We've just been thinking of that as a DC battery. Here's the symbol for an alternating current power source. What does it mean that it's alternating current? Well, it means that the current is alternately going clockwise, then counterclockwise, then clockwise, then counterclockwise. If you drew it as a graph, it could look like a sine graph. It gets to a maximum clockwise current, then it declines to zero, then it goes to a maximum counterclockwise current, then it goes back to zero, then it goes to a maximum clockwise current again, so it keeps cycling back and forth between the clockwise and the counterclockwise, passing through zero. When we were working with direct current, we just said, what's the voltage? of the power source, but now we can't say just what's the voltage because the voltage is constantly changing and the current is constantly changing. So instead we might say what's the peak voltage or what's the peak current. We could use VP for the peak voltage and IP for the peak current. For example, this height would represent the peak voltage. We could also talk about what the average current is, or the average voltage. That might be more useful because the peak is only existing for a short instant. It might be more indicative to see what the average is. Well, there's a whole bunch of different ways to take averages. And it turns out that the best way to take averages for alternating current is what's called the root mean squared. RMS. To save time, I don't think we're actually going to go into how to actually calculate this. That might not be too important, but we should just know that this is a way of calculating an average. You can see that from the name because it has the word mean in it, and the word mean is another synonym for average. So the root mean squared is a way of finding the average current for the average voltage. One reason that this is convenient is because it's very easy to figure out the root mean squared if you know the peak. Do you know what the formula is? For the root mean squared? Yeah. If you know the peak current, how would you find the root mean squared current? Not far off, you divide by root 2. Well, this is a very simple formula. This is one of the advantages of focusing on the root mean squared. There's a very simple relationship between peak current and root mean squared current. Well, then, how would you figure out the root mean squared voltage? Um, the voltage peak over its root. This is the relationship between any peak and any root mean squared. If you know the peak, you can always divide by root 2 to find the root mean squared. So we're not going to prove that. We'll just memorize that as a formula. Let's try part A. Good. You have a calculator? About 120, get 120.2, maybe we'll just call that 120 volts.
beef. What number is that? 120. That's actually the root mean squared. Oh. But that's fine because what was the question asking me for? For the root mean squared, the part. So we should be working with the root mean squared. We should work, it's better to work with the root mean squared than p because that's what the question is asking about. So then, one. good. The only problem is we should try to build more into the picture. So they told us that R was 120 ohms. We should always try to build all the information we can into our circuit picture. What's the question asking us for? It's asking for the root mean squared current. Now, it doesn't matter whether we figure out the current from the power source or through the resistor, because they're the same, because they're in series. So we can figure out either of those. Now, you have a good insight here that we can use Ohm's law. You already figured out that if you put in the root mean squared voltage, you'll get the root mean squared current. Or if you put in the peak voltage, you'll get the peak current. So you can still use Ohm's law here. We just have to be consistent. The one thing we never want to do is use peak for one of the variables and root mean squared for the other. We have to be consistent. So here you saw that we can use this form of the equation. We already know what the root mean squared voltage is. So we get that the current is 1 amp. We also know that since there's only one device here, the voltage from the source is always the same as the voltage through the resistor. So we can use this 120 volts here for the same 120 volts here. But you have to be careful about that. Things are not always the same. This is our key equation for resistors. One thing we can see from this is that the voltage in the resistor is proportional to the current. That means as the current is increasing, the voltage will be increasing. And as the voltage is decreasing, the current will be decreasing. These are always in phase with each other. They're always in phase because V equals IR. There's never any phase difference between them. One peaks at the same time as the other one peaks. In this chapter, we're going to use this symbol for a phase difference. But the phase difference for a resistor is zero, because the voltage and the current are always in phase with each other. Here's our equation for power with alternating current. For direct current, the power was just IV. For direct current, the power was just IV, but here we have a more complicated equation. Let's try part C. Oops. Okay. 
the cosine isn't zero, phi is zero. Good. Right. <coughs> and then cosine is zero, it's one. So it's just one twenty. What? 